Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Black Salt Audio's low control plugin. So let's go. So the low control plugin is ideally used to control and enrich your low end. So if you actually check out their website, it says that you can get the perfect low end from one plugin. First, you compress the low frequencies independently without affecting the rest of the signal. Then you use the enhancer to beef up the rumble or give you more size on the bass on smaller speakers. So that's exactly what this does. So you can even go to their website and check out how they've used it on the bass, the kick drum, piano and low brass instruments as well. So let's check out my video and see how I've used it in the mix. So first, let's take a look at how I've used the low control plugin on the bass guitar. So this is how the bass guitar sounds like without the low control plugin. That sounds pretty good, but check out what happens when I turn this on. So without this, I'll just play you how it sounds without it again. It almost feels like there's no bass at all. It's like something is missing. So basically how I'm using it is I am compressing all the frequencies below 77 hertz in this case. Uh, let me show you. So I'm actually compressing quite a bit because this track has a lot of low end. So if you want to hear what exactly you're compressing, you can just turn on this solo low button and you can actually hear what exactly you're compressing. And what you can do with this knob is turn the volume of that up or down using the gain control. We have a gain reduction of around 4 dB, so I could boost somewhere around 4 dB and check out how that sounds like. So without it, it just sounds like half the track is missing. So you get this really nice controlled low end and you can actually boost the volume of that control low end by using the gain control. This is one of my favorite things that you can actually do uh, in this plugin. The next part of this plugin ideally is the enhance control, right? So what you can do is you can add harmonics to a certain frequency range over here. You can enhance the frequencies by adding some harmonics. Because I'm kind of going overboard and you can actually set uh, the frequency that you want to enhance using the harmonics. So if you want this really subby kind of low end, so you can actually kind of bring this down to maybe 50 hertz. And this is where you get that really subby low end that kind of shakes the floor. So if you are on good speakers or if you have a subwoofer, you can probably hear what this is doing. Like I can feel like my table kind of vibrating with the frequencies there. So if you set this to like a higher frequency, you can kind of enhance. So right now I've set it to around 200 Hertz, but you can choose the right frequency that kind of works with your tracks. And when you use this control to enhance that, it adds these beautiful harmonics to just fill out those, uh, fill out the low end on smaller speakers you can ideally hear what's going on uh, in smaller speakers like mine or when you're using it on headphones or if you're listening to it finally it translates really well into all systems when you use the enhanced control at like a higher frequency range so if you want that subby low end then go for anything below say 50 hertz if you want like nice low end that fills out these small speakers then go anywhere from maybe 140 or maybe even higher, right? So so now let's take a look at how the bass guitar sounds like in the mix with the low control off and with the low control on. 
So this is how it sounds like with the low control off. Okay, so this is how it sounds like with the low control on. So again, so if you're listening on smaller speakers or if you're listening on headphones, you can definitely tell that the bass guitar sounds more present in the mix. You can actually kind of hear it and it's filling out the low end on all these speakers so that there's no real hole in between like the low frequencies and the really high frequencies. So now let's take a look at how I use it on the kick drum. Now this is not something that I use all the time, but if you feel like you have a kick drum which is kind of lacking that extra punch, or that extra low end, you can definitely go ahead and use low control to bring out those low frequencies. So this is how it sounds like with it off. Right? And this is how it sounds with the low control on. So now you can see with it on, like there's so much more punch and there's so much more low end coming through the kick drum. So if you are kind of playing music that involves like too much of double bass and uh, extremely fast double bass music, then probably you might not want to push this this hard because in that style of music, you ideally want the clicky frequencies to kind of cut through from the kick drum. But for music that actually has space, you can definitely use uh, this low control plugin to enhance the punch in the low low end of the kick drum so that it really feels fat and punchy when it's actually being played. So this is how the mix sounds with the low control off on the kick drum. And this is how the mix sounds with the low control on on the kick drum. So if you are listening on good speakers, you can definitely tell that the kick drum sounds a lot more fatter and a lot more punchier. So, so yeah, that, that's the magic of low control guys. So this is how I like to use the low control plugin to enhance and control my low end. So if you guys want to pick up the low control plugin, you can use the coupon code in the description box below to get a 10% off when you purchase it. It also helps me out. It helps out this channel and uh, definitely go and check it out. Low control, black salt audio. Thank you so much guys for checking out that video. Please leave a like, a comment and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss any more content from me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.